Happy New Year and welcome Japanese woodblock print collectors and enthusiasts. In the first part of this video, we're going to talk about one of the most famous and popular Shin Hanga artists, Kawase Hasui. And in the second part, we'll do a bit of a comparison between Hasui and my favorite landscape artist, Ando Hiroshige. But first, a quick introduction to the Shin Hanga or New Print Movement. Here are a few of the well-known Shin Hanga artists. In the early 1900s, these artists took a Western-influenced painterly approach, which was quite different than the previous generations of ukiyo-e artists. The Shin Hanga artists used Western ideas, such as the qualities of light and how to express different moods of a scene. They were trying to arrive at a more nuanced, creative interpretation of their subject. Shin Hanga prints were primarily aimed at the Western market and were more popular outside of Japan than within Japan. Side note, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was a big fan of Shin Hanga. And at the launch of the Macintosh in 1984, he used a scanned image from his own collection of Hashiguchi Goyo's Combing Her Hair. But Kawase Hasui was Steve Jobs' favorite Japanese artist. So now let's talk about Kawase Hasui. He was born in 1883. From a child, he always wanted to be an artist and he studied under several Japanese and Western style painters. Hasui worked closely with the publisher Shozaburo Watanabe, who was the lead promoter of the Shin Hanga movement. This artist-publisher relationship lasted 40 years. If you go to the Ginza area in Japan today, you can visit Watanabe's shop that was established in 1909. As I mentioned previously, the Shin Hanga artists took more of a painterly approach. This is especially true for Hasui. Here we can see examples of his initial watercolors on the left and the final print on the right. Hasui's works were commonly landscapes but displayed atmospheric effects and natural lighting. Of course, like the ukiyo-e artists before him, Hasui had to work closely with the woodblock carver and printer in order to achieve the multi-layered effects that he envisioned in his watercolors. Hasui once said, no artist is able to savor the satisfaction I have when the printer is able to bring out just the color I was looking for. Here are some prints from a couple of Kawase's most famous print series, 12 Scenes of Tokyo and Selected Views of Japan. In this first print, you can see it almost looks like a pastel rather than a woodblock print. The texture and shading he established in the printing process really creates a beautiful image. In this uh, rainy print, we can see how expertly he captures the atmosphere of a rainy day. Everything looks wet. You can feel the moisture. And in this print, we can feel the stillness of the evening. Notice the reflections in the water that are even more visible than the bridge itself and how that contributes to the image. Here, the boats and the buildings in the distance look flat compared to the details and shading of the bridge in the foreground. Hasui was really an expert in using reflections and shadows cast by the light of the moment to enhance the mood of the image. Here's another bridge scene, but this time it's a bright sunny day with a father and child walking across the old stone bridge, the blue sky and bridge reflected in the water below. This scene of Kiyomizu Temple in the winter shows us a monochromatic, gray, cold, snowy evening with the red temple rising defiantly next to the green tree laden with snow. And this winter print is almost pointillistic due to the pattern created by the heavy white snow. We can see how well he works with perspective and swatches of color to draw us into this scene. I really like this print of Kumamoto Castle. Once again, look at the detail in the reflections. You can see the texture that the printer created with a baron on the lower left area of the print. The amount of subtle details in this print is incredible. I thought it would be interesting to do a Hasui versus Hiroshige 
comparison, a which artist is better kind of face-off. But although that sounds like fun, it doesn't make, make much sense to compare the two in this way, and I'm definitely not the one to cast judgment on either of them. But in order to better understand and appreciate these artists, we can do some comparisons since they were both primarily landscape artists. So although they lived at very different times, let's compare some of their work. Here on the left side, we see Hiroshige's print of Zoji Temple in the snow. On the right side, Hasui's version. You can see the clear difference between the ukiyo-e and shinhanga styles. Ukiyo-e depends on the black outlines and bold simple colors with some simple atmospheric shading or color gradations. Hasui's print reflects the Western realism. It has many more layers of color and shading that give it that subtle painterly look. On this print of the Half Moon Bridge at Kamaedo, Tenjin Shrine, we can see both artists chose a similar composition. Hiroshige uses about 12 woodblocks to render his scene, and Hasui probably used 20 or more to render his. I think both are incredibly beautiful. In these two prints of rainstorms, you can see both artists really represent the driving wet rain coming down at a sharp diagonal. Hasui reflects the gentle light from the houses in the rain puddles, and Hiroshige emphasizes the force of the rain and wind in the bending of trees and the, the frantic travelers. Hasui and Hiroshige were artistic innovators. Their contributions have had lasting impacts both in Japan and internationally. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you are interested in learning more about Hasui and Shinhanga, I recommend going to Elias Martin's website and YouTube channel, Collecting Japanese Prints, where he has a lot of very in-depth content about Hasui's work. You can also check out the website Mokuhanga One for more Hasui information. I have lots of interesting videos in store for you this year, so please like and subscribe, and happy collecting!